Hey guys, Sandy here and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to be bringing to you Stamping for Scrapbookers. Now this is a monthly series that Sarah, Christina, Caitlin, and I do. Uh, today our theme is geometric shapes. So I went through my stash. I found this close to my heart stamp set that has a bunch of circles. It is retired. Um, I found the all to new trendy circles and I also have this small one from Brutus Monroe. Uh, if I find them, I'll leave links down below. No guarantees. Um, I pulled out the Pebbles Happy Hooray collection. This already has some circles on it, so I'm planning on using that. And then on this one has uh, cupcakes on this side, but I really like the orange grid. So I have those, and I pulled out my Close to My Heart inks, which I think will coordinate well. I just bumped my head into the camera, that I think will coordinate well with these colors. So let's see what I can do. Now I went ahead and grabbed a couple sheets of cardstock from my stash as well. And these are just basically card blank size cardstock that I get in some of my card kits. And you guys know that I don't make cards with my card kit. So layers it is. Now I went ahead and grabbed my stamps and I have this little, um, what is this, acrylic block that I've had for years and years and years and I like it, so I use it. Now if you want it to, you could set yourself up with some sort of stamp positioner, but honestly this kind of stamping, you really don't need a stamp positioner. This is the kind of stamping that basically you're just using to decorate your page you're basically creating your own pattern paper. And I wanted to show you that you can use pattern paper and just kind of elevate it a little bit with some ink and some stamps. So what I am doing uh, is taking each color that coordinates and I'm just using a different type of stamp. Some of them I are, uh, I are, oh goodness, grammar. <laughs> Um, some of them I am uh, kind of centering over the circle. Some of them are a little off kilter. Some are semi close. Like it's, it's just varying. It's just however I was feeling. Um, but I'm trying to keep the same thing throughout. So all of the orange ones I just stamped are, are off of the, the circle. Um, with these pink ones that I'm doing, they are pretty much on the circle. Th this stamp is a little bit larger, but that doesn't bother me whatsoever. Um, as you can tell, I'm also not getting perfectly inked stamp impressions each time. And again, I am okay with this because I am creating a pattern. The stamping is not like the end all be all on this layout. The stamping is just an element. And I love the way that it turned out. I think it is fantastic. Um, and I think it adds like extra interest and extra uh, dimension and everything else for a layout that would have been totally fine without it. But if you're looking for something, if you're like, man, my layouts, you know, they, they just feel a little uh, or, I just don't know what to do to give it that punch. Do something like this. Uh, if you have a square background, stamp some square things. If you have a triangle background, stamp some triangle things. Circles are easy. Um, hearts are easy. Stars are easy because those are things that are very frequently found in pattern paper. So circle stars and hearts, very easy because they're very frequently found in your pattern paper. They're also good basic shapes of stamps to have. So it works. Um, I did go find a couple other colors uh, because I wanted to do more stamping. So I went ahead and I'm using my little Brutus Monroe guys now, and this is a solid uh, stamp. And again, the stamping is not perfect. The stamping, it, sh it just isn't perfect. And it almost, it almost looks better that way. Not almost, it does look better that way. What am I saying? So it, if everything was perfectly stamped and all the color saturation was exactly the same, 
then it would just look like the pattern paper. It would just look like that because the pattern paper is perfectly saturated. And I like the fact that it's not. I like the fact that there is difference in the saturation and difference in the brightness. It makes me happy. Now, if you were not feeling this and you wanted your stamping to be perfectly saturated, uh, then that's when a stamp positioner would be good uh, to use. Now, I am using this uh, scrap piece of paper just to hold uh, between the two layers of paper. Now, you don't really need to use a scrap piece of paper if you didn't adhere your two pages together, but you know, I'm impatient. I adhered my two pages together and we went with it. So I do um, use that blue piece of paper, totally messed up on my uh, trimmer cutting there. So I just, instead of tossing that paper, um, I just kind of reposition it and my border around my photos a little bit thinner than I planned on, but it turns out great. I don't have to like change anything or worry about it. I'm okay with how it turned out. I do cut out about a two and a half inch block with this green paper. And I was just going to place it on top of my layout, but I was like, you know what? You've got a lot of stuff going on in the background. You should do something with this plain paper. Now, one thing I do like to do is run it through my paper crimper, uh, but I decided to use this larger circle that is in the Alta New stamp set and just go ahead and place a couple of these circles down here. Again, my stamping is not all completely perfect. If you want it to do perfect stamping, stamp positioner. So I'm just gonna stamp off the ink a little bit and then put that off to the side. So I am gonna create a vertical line across my page. However, the green pieces are not going to go all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna have a little bit of the orange peeking out. Now I kind of kept them straight, but even if it's just a little crooked, you're not even gonna notice it. I do pop up my photo on some fun foam. Thank you, Crystal. And then that is going to give me even more uh, interest on the page. So I have a little twirly organizer over to my left and I was looking over to try to figure out what uh, washi tape I wanted to bring in. I decided to go with this kind of glitter tape and it is decorative, which is, which is fine. And I'm just putting it on the bottom piece of this green paper here. And that's just to give it a little bit of oomph. Uh, this is not a very heavily decorated page. This is not a very heavily, you know, embellished page. There's not a lot on it, uh, but there is a lot on it because of all the stamping we did. So say you're running out of papers and you don't have a lot of embellishments and stuff to match. I mean, who are we kidding? We could probably find something in our stash, but you know, this is one of the excuses we tell ourselves, or at least I tell myself, um, oh, I don't have a lot to match that. Um, stamping, totally, totally we do it. Now, I even thought about stamping and cutting some circles out and really going crazy with the stamping of the circles but I decided to keep it in the background. Um, I didn't want to cover up a whole heck of a lot of the backgrounds because, you know, I spent a little bit of time making it and I liked it. Um, so I did pull out this little uh, label. This is an old, old label. Um, I know I purchased it at least five years ago because I purchased it right when we um, were moving here. And we've been here or over five years now, so I know it's been that long. Um, I got them at Michael's, and you know, they're just chilling in my stash. Because I bought them on clearance, they were on a stupid, stupid clearance, and I bought a lot of them. A lot. Now, you know what? I don't even think, I don't even think that I bought them while we were here. I'm pretty sure I bought it before we moved here because I started my love of labels before we moved here. And then when we got here, I was like, woo, labels. Um, 
And that was Lana snorting, if you heard her in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I thoroughly entertain my child. <laughs> um, actually, I think I thoroughly entertain my children. Um, my son used to have his uh, barrack mates um, watch my videos when he was overseas. I had this spike in viewership um, from overseas, and I was like, what the heck? Like, like wow. <laughs> And I found out it was my son and his friends watching me. <laughs> so, thanks, Alex. Um, so, yeah, it, that, that didn't stay. Um, once he came back to the States, that that country's viewership went, poo, like, plummeted. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there is that. But I, I probably think I embarrass uh, Chloe more than anything. Um then, then tickling her funny bone, I probably embarrass her, and she probably rolls her eyes and goes, "Oh, mom, <laughs> she's she's still she's still in that phase of life." Okay. Anyway, back to what I'm doing here on the layout. So, I popped up this little banner thing on some foam squares. Thanks, Amber. And um, I did it because the banner is pre-folded, so it gives you that. Uh, dimensional look. So I just put the foam squares in there um, so that it would help that dimensional look. I used my Go the Scenic Route, Go the Scenic Route, however you want to say it, puffy stickers, and I just put on the word happy. Now I did choose the word happy for two particular reasons. One, because it fit on the banner. Two, because I actually pulled color out of the photograph and all of the blue that is on that uh, Pixar pier, I just felt like I needed a little bit more blue. So that is that. Now I went uh, to my little die cuts and I found a couple things that would work. Um, this game spinner, I'm not sure if it's October afternoon or one of the Stephen Duncan collections, which he he designed for October afternoon, and then I think he's still designing for Echo Park slash Cartabella right now. Um, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's one of those. Uh, I thought about the spinner, but I was like, no. And the reason why I figured this was good for Pixar Pier was because you know it's Pixar Pier. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. Like, cause that's, that's the way I think. That's the way my brain works. Like I pull out the game, the little game board piece thing. And I'm like, Pixar Pier, duh. And then I'm like, Spinner, duh, Pixar Pier. Like that, that is literally what my brain was thinking. Now I did go in and look for some other die cuts. And I have this Spirograph one that came in, I want to say, Field trip? No. Yes. Yes, field trip. Um, I was trying to figure out a way to bring in this little uh, half circle note card, but you know, it didn't. It didn't really work. I was only really looking for circular items. I thought about bringing in this black kind of circle thing. Um, because I cannot tell you guys how hard it was for me not to put a layer of black between the circle paper that I stamped on and then that orange graph paper behind it. So I love colorful layouts and I love pops of black on them. Uh, but this time there, there was no pop of black and it was hard, you guys. <laughs> it was legitimately hard. Now I did cut that spirograph uh, apart. So I've got it down here at the bottom too, just because I felt like there needed to be a little bit of decoration at the bottom. There's not going to be any journaling on this layout. This is going to be kind of like the intro page to the Pixar Pier portion of the album. So there's not really going to be any journaling, but everything after this page in the album will be Pixar Pier until I like move to another subject matter. Um, it is going in a just a Disneyland album, so it's kind of a divider page, but I'm not making divider pages for everything. It's just the way my mind works with Disney albums. So there is that. Now I did pull out some uh, chipboard circle thing 
uh, that I put down here. And then that's going to do it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out the links down below for Caitlin, Sarah, and Christina's take on stamping for scrapbookers with geometric shapes. And we will see you again for another episode of this series next month. I'll see you again real soon for another video.